In our last episode, we helped small Bertha and the dregs find a new home for themselves at the Echo Lake Lumber Mill. This leaves one place left in Far Harbor to explore, and that is the bar, The Last Plank. Heading inside, we overhear a conversation between the bartender, Mitch, and his waitress, Debbie. Ah, oh, your damn cat knocked something over. Again. Ah, Tink didn't mean anything by it, Mitch. I swear, her tail's a menace. Does she even know it's attached to her bleeding hide? If you want me to work in this flea-ridden bar of yours, you'll watch your tone. Ah, uh, fine. Looks like not even Far Harbor is immune from typical domestic squabbles. As we get closer, Mitch calls the entire pub to attention. Everyone! Everyone! I'm trying to have a conversation here. Shut your mouths, open your damned ears! So the fogs are coming for us all, and I can't see any better way of greeting it than to have another round. On. The. House! Yeah! Woo! Time to party! Here's some Mitch! Mitch! Well, that's a bit fatalistic. I'm all for free booze, but surely Mitch needs to run a profit. Talking to Mitch. Mainlander, today's your lucky day. Free beer for ya! Ha <laughs> You give away free drinks often? A fully stocked bar ain't no use to a corpse, is it? Ha! <laughs> What's the catch? Not a catch to be found. A full bar ain't no use to a corpse. You have anything a bit stronger? Pushing your luck, are ya? Ha! <laughs> I like it. Take this. Top shelf all around. So, drink up! You stay here over long and the fog will claim you. Might as well meet her with a belly full of fire, eh? What's so special about the fog on the island? Can you feel it? Even here, as safe as anyone can be on this damned island. It's alive. You walk inland and it'll blanket you up in no time. And if the clickety-click of the Geiger don't get you, the madness will. The island will claim us all in the end. The fog can drive you crazy? Yes. It's not natural. The trappers you find inland, some were always murderous louts. But many just got lost in the fog for too long. And the mine goes. If you have any sense, return where you came from. And don't look back. If it's so dangerous, why do you stay? This is our home. If you call yourself a proper man or woman, you don't give up on that. Besides, we all gotta die. Might as well do it with your long knife deep in the belly of the beast that wrongs you. Ha! This conversation goes differently after we complete the captain's dance. Excuse me. Everyone, make way. Did you really kill the queen? The Mariner said you did. Don't pester her, Debbie. Of course she did. Now this is what a badass looks like. I fear we had you all wrong. Well, Captain Avery didn't. Right. Holier than thou Avery got the right of it. And thanks for reminding me. Here's a round on the house. I'll pass. Next you're gonna tell me you faced the Queen sober. <laughs> Hey, thanks. Least I can do. That's awfully friendly of you. We have mainlanders coming in and out all the time. Worst of a lot are thieves or murderers. And the others we find floating face down in the harbor. But not you. What's your beef with Avery? Avery was born on the island, but she left for a good long spell. Didn't come back until, well, 10, 11 years ago? And since then, she's been trying to make us adopt all sorts of mainland nonsense. I ain't arguing she doesn't do good, or her heart being in the right place, but why change what ain't broke? Mitch, I mean, since she did the captain's dance, maybe your uncle? That's my own family business. Ma'am, Mitch is too damn proud, but we're worried about Uncle Ken. For Pete's sake, pride is gonna be the death of you lot. Captain's been saying that for years. Certainly, his uncle's in need. I don't want to intrude on anything personal. Don't believe any of that family business garbage. Mitch needs you. If my family was in trouble, I'd do anything to help them. 
You hear that, Mitch? Even someone like her would ask for help. What's wrong with his uncle? Uncle Ken's the last one still living on the island. The last holdout. Crazier than a bag full of starved mole rats, he is. Mitch sent him some of the fog condensers? So he might still be alive. He's safe from the fog. But the campground's got to be swarming with God knows what. Listen, it shames me to ask it. Oh, but he is my kin. Could you check up on him and find some way to drag his hide back here? I'll pay, of course. What if he won't come back? Well, then at least check up on him, right? I'll pay the same regardless. The island's dangerous. My services won't come cheap. <sighs> if you look into it, I can throw some supplies in to help in the fog. The plank ain't exactly flush with caps. No promises, I'll get to it. His homestead's the old visitor's center, inland. And look out, he loves his traps. If we pass the speech check, the supplies he gives us are three stim packs and two rat away. We begin the quest, the holdout. Search for Uncle Ken. Browsing his inventory. Mitch? Booze for the belly or bunk for the night? Let's see what you have on tap. Music to the ears. We see that he has a typical bartender's fare. Of note, he sells shotgun shells and offers shipments of glass. We can also rent a room from him. I'd like to rent a room. It's up the stairs. And it's only 10 caps. Next, we can have a chat with Debbie. You want a drink? What do you have to drink? All sorts of old world booze. We carry Vim too. And before you ask, Vim is an Islander favorite. But it may pack more punch than the stuff you're used to. Let's see what you have. You got caps, we got the goods. She has a slightly different inventory compared to Mitch. She has different ammo types available, but she does share the same amount of money to barter with. Need to drown your troubles? Talk to Mitch, the last plank. Ah, drown your worries and cheap booze. <laughs> Mitch is a chatterbox, talking almost as often as Alan Lee and Brooks. We see a door to the east that leads back outside to the drags. There's Tink, the infamous cat. And here we find old Longfellow. He's the local guide we need to talk to if we want to get to Acadia. We'll have to come back and talk with him later. Burns the belly, but gets the job done. Get it now. Heading upstairs, we find our room, first to the left, room number one. Even though we rented the room, everything here is set to owned. We can't take from the containers and we can't store anything here safely without it becoming owned by Mitch. So it's really just a place to sleep. Many of the other patrons of the last plank aren't so lucky. We've got our own room, but there are a number of beds here without any privacy whatsoever. And they're almost all occupied. The eastern side of the upstairs is no different. A few more beds with harbor men sleeping here. This also appears to be Mitch and Debbie's office. There's a desk here with a typewriter, and despite the typewriter, we find a few handwritten notes, one of which is in the garbage can. Reading it, cats are dirty critters that pee indoors. They got no business being in a bar. Mitch. Wow, his hatred for cats is consistent. Then, reading the note on the desk itself, Fine, but cats do not belong on top of chairs, tables, any place a paying customer would sit. Period. Firmly, Mitch. Goodness, I wonder exactly how long this strife over the cat's been going on. Life's too bloody short to be sober. I, for one, won't go down unless I'm roaring drunk. <laughs> Heading back downstairs, we can explore behind the bar. Mitch has a small kitchen and a refrigerator to the southwest. Moving east, we find two notes tucked under the cash register. In the first one, Tink can sit wherever she wants or you can wait the damn tables yourself. Firmly and sincerely, Debbie. <laughs> and in the next one, if you think I'd choose you over Tink, you're sorely mistaken. Sincerely, Debbie. Man, she must really love that cat. And finally, crouching down, we find another note hiding beneath a Vim Quartz, a pretty rare beverage. Despite all of our adventures so far, this is the first we've found. However, it is owned. We'd have to steal it. The note is labeled, Run. To whom it may concern, 
If you're reading this, I'm dead. The harbor's dead. And likely every damned soul on this island except the children of Adam are dead. My advice to you is run. This island is cursed. It may be Adam. It may be the Red Death. It may be some angry ghost from the old world. But it's true. The fog or the cultists are coming for you. Leave and tell everyone to leave this cursed island alone for good. Mitch. Goodness, poor old Mitch. He really does think he's about to die. Well, I wonder how poor old Uncle Ken is feeling. We find Tink happily standing on a nearby table. This cat doesn't follow the rules. Ah, drown your worries and cheap booze. <laughs> well, we need to find Uncle Ken. Mitch told us he was at the nearby National Park Visitor Center, and he marked it on our map. It's not too far away, about halfway between here and Dalton Farm. Along the way, we find a number of ruins, including an abandoned pit stop with public restrooms and ghouls. In the women's restroom, if we open the stalls, we find one toilet that a garden gnome has been stuffing full of fish. For whatever reason, I can't tell. He also has a garden of carrots here, and there's a fish gingerly lying on the other toilet, too. I guess garden gnomes fish from toilets. Near to the showers, there's a chem box with chems inside, and just outside, we find the skeleton of a woman in a green cap holding a bottle of vim. At least she died drinking what she loved. Nearby, we find a ruined bus next to a destroyed truck. In the bus is a novice-locked suitcase with goodies inside, and next to this is a cooler. The truck is hauling a flatbed, and on the bed is some sort of cage. The side of the cage is covered in Vim advertising, and heading around back, if we climb onto the flatbed, we find a human skeleton surrounded by blood. On the ground beneath his hand is Carlo's note. Carlo, look, I know you need the overtime, but you're literally walking around with a target painted on your back, man. We've lost three shipments the past month, and the last suit of power armor we sent out was stolen right off the truck. Whoever is doing this seems to be more interested in damaging Vim's equipment than hurting us. What I'm saying is that if crap goes down, ditch the power armor and get the hell out of there. I don't care what those dicks in marketing say, Willis Rudd. And then standing nearby in a compact power armor frame is a full suit of T-51B power armor with the fusion core and sporting a brand new Vim Refresh power armor paint scheme that comes new with the Far Harbor DLC. The lore on this note alludes to an attack on the Vim Cola Company, which we discover while exploring the Vim bottling plant. I covered this drama and how it connects to this power armor frame in my video on the bottling plant that you can watch here. Nearby, we find a campground next to some docks. By the tents, we find the skeleton of a woman missing her head. Looks like she might have died in some rockfall. And the skeleton of a man draped over a picnic table. Next to their tent is an explosives box. Interesting thing to take camping. At last, we arrive at the National Park Visitor Center. We see the Far Harbor fog condensers set up outside. This must be where we'll find Uncle Ken. The parking lot is still filled with a number of rusting wrecks. And we find part of a trapper corpse. How did this guy die? We haven't been here yet. Heading under the canopy, we find a Vim Cola machine, which strangely enough has a Nuka Cola Quantum inside. I'm sure that must be an oversight. And moving towards the visitor center, we find more trapper corpses. Oh, and a frag mine. Oh, suddenly we realize how these guys died. This whole place is booby-trapped with mines and bear traps. To move forward, we can disarm as many as we can find. We see corpses of trappers and feral ghouls leading all the way up the steps. The good news is that the visitor center does have signs of habitation. We see a cooking station nearby with a fire lit. And then in the garden just outside the building, we see an old man farming for corn. This is Uncle Ken, and he looks well. Talking to him. Go away! You see? You see those corpses? They're from me. Unless you're ready for the long walk. Go away! 
You killed all of these? By yourself? Why? Just because I'm an old man, you don't think I can protect myself? Wrong! Yeah, Mitch warned me you were crazy. Mitch? My boy Mitch sent you? He was always a smart one. He sent me the fog condensers. Made it safe to breathe here. Glad to hear he still cares about his old uncle. But you... What? What have you done? They're coming! They're coming! What? What's coming? Who knows this time? What the... This isn't my fault. You trumping around, making noise. There's a whole ecosystem here and you've kicked it. Then let's work together. Ah, fine. What's the plan, Uncle Ken? <sighs> Let me think. I haven't reset my traps or repaired the defenses. Quick, do what you can with the workbench supplies. They'll be here soon. With that, Uncle Ken gives us access to the workbench at the visitor center. We can now use this as a settlement, but first we've got to set up defenses. Sadly, I spent so much time nosing around outside that I didn't have a chance to put down one turret before we got attacked. So Uncle Ken is constantly fighting off raids of trappers, ghouls, and God knows what else. And he survived for this long without any help from anyone else. Gotta say, I'm impressed. We can now use the National Park Visitor Center as a settlement. At the moment, we only have one settler, that's Uncle Ken himself, but the settlement is huge, almost as big as the Echo Lake Lumber Mill, making it one of the largest settlements in the entire game. I spent a great deal of time building up my National Park Visitor Center, and I gave a tour of the place in a video that you can watch here. But even if we don't turn it into a settlement, it's a good place to explore. Heading inside, if we turn right, we find the entrance to the Visitor Center gift shop, and on the front counter, we find a copy of Islander's Almanac Recipe Roundup. You've unlocked sludge-based recipes at the chemistry station. This is the magazine I talked about in our second episode when I went over condensed fog. We have now unlocked four new recipes that all take condensed fog as an ingredient. The first is the Agile Sludge Pack, which increases action point regeneration compared to our current radiation level for 12 minutes. Then there's the Durable Sludge Pack, which increases damage resistance compared to our current radiation level for 12 minutes. Both of these are injectables like stim packs. The other two are beverages. The first is the Resilient Sludge Cocktail, which removes 150 rad resist, but grants us plus 75 to our maximum health for 12 minutes. And finally, there's the Strong Sludge Cocktail, which increases strength compared to our current radiation level for 12 minutes. These two look like big glass bottles with a cork inside, the substance within is murky, doesn't really look appetizing. Since this is a potential settlement, there's not a lot of scrap or loot here. In the gift shop, we find a small selection of toys, a couple of cars, a rocket ship, a teddy bear, and some blocks. Moving back out to the lobby, we see a number of empty display cases. Then moving northeast, we find a bunch of other destroyed display cases and ruined computer terminals. There's a weapons workbench here and two bathrooms, both of which are empty. Then heading upstairs, we find more ruined display cases and what must be Uncle Ken's bed. Nearby, he has a couple of bottles, one of which is Bob Rob's Best Moonshine. Not sure exactly how Bob Rob's Best from Diamond City got all the way here to the island, but I guess we can chalk it up to Vadim's hustle. And a couple bottles of vodka. It must be a family favorite. It was vodka that Mitch gave us if we passed the dialogue check for something stronger. 
Moving into the employees only section, we find a couple of ruined office spaces. This leads to a makeshift deck outside, which connects through a hole in the wall to a staircase leading up to a walkway on the roof of the visitor center. Here we find a guard post, which I'm sure will come in quite handy as the settlement gets attacked in the future. After claiming this settlement, the place does get attacked quite frequently, not just by trappers and ghouls, but also by dangerous and horrible monsters from the fog. So it's a good idea to build this place up with excellent defenses. When done exploring, we can head back to the ground and check in with Uncle Ken. Not bad. Mitch was a good boy to send you. But still, time to go. Goodbye. Goodbye. Before you attract more of them. Why would you possibly stay here? It's dangerous. My family's lived here for seven generations. I will not disrespect their memory. Now go. Stay here, and you're going to be taking that long walk yourself. Yes, walking's good for you. Now go. Stay safe, Uncle Ken. Yes, very safe. Now leave. With that, Uncle Ken stays here at the National Park Visitor Center, and we can head back to Mitch at the last plank to let him know that Uncle Ken is safe. I found Uncle Ken. He's still alive, but he won't come back. That... that's cause for celebration. We were worried about him. He really is all right. Do you think he's safe? Can we do anything to help him out? If he's still clinging on, I might be able to convince a few locals to head his way. His defenses were good, but it's a dangerous area. Hmm. Maybe I can see if some of the locals want a homestead again. If I hadn't been there, he'd be dead already. Ordinary and headstrong. Maybe I can see if any locals want a chance to homestead again. He's a lot tougher than he looks. Maybe I should see if any of the locals want a chance to homestead again. As tough as he is, a few more guns. Here. I... I... Mitch is at a loss for words. Hush now. I owe you one. With that, we complete the quest The Holdout, and Mitch gives us the Firebelly recipe, which we'll go over in just a bit. Or, instead of allowing Uncle Ken to stay at his home, we can try to convince him to come to Far Harbor. Mitch sent me to bring you home. Safely. Please, go to Far Harbor. This is my home! And what? You want me to huddle like a beggar in Far Harbor? I... I can't just leave. You have living family that cares about you. Are you just gonna turn your back on him? I am an old man. I just want to live out my days on my land. You wouldn't understand. It's your funeral, then. Good. I'll be the only one in attendance. Now go. How about this? I'm not asking you, old man. I'm dragging you back. Oh, fine. Threaten an old man. Big shot. I'll go back. You have my word. Just consider this a vacation. You'll come back later when it's safe. You are so... persistent. Fine. You happy? You've chased me from my home. Ah, I'll pack my things. With that, Uncle Ken walks off towards Far Harbor. Heading back to Far Harbor, we see that Uncle Ken made it safe. He stands by the bar next to Mitch. Hey there. My boy! She actually did it. Did what? Chase me from my home? You should dump her in the harbor. You're really not grateful? You get to see your boy again. Ah, it is good to see family again. He never visits or writes. You're a pain in the ass. You're no snowflake either, mainlander. Well, the job's done. Oh, goody. Now I can live as a capless beggar. Thank you very much. I probably saved your life. Yes, big hero. But if we choose this option, Uncle Ken is not exactly grateful. You took me away from my home. <sighs> Old Longfellow. Bah! He is a small child next to me. Mainlanders think the island's easy. Well, she. <laughs> Everyone moaning about the fog. This fog is nothing. Much worse when I was young. 
In my day, everyone does the captain dance. Maybe two, three times a year. So don't get no ideas. Oh, thank you so much for putting me on this rickety dock. Cassie Dalton says she's the oldest on the island. Bah, it's me. I will live forever. <laughs> yes, yes, I am doing well. Goodbye, goodbye. Either way, we complete the quest, we get the caps, and we get the Fire Belly recipe. Mitch's patented Fire Belly. One bottle of vodka, the cheap stuff will do. <laughs> These guys do like their vodka. Two bundles of black blood leaf, ground up, tossed in, whatever. A bit of aster for even extra kick. Drink! Stop if you start bleeding from the ears. Oh, this sounds lovely. We craft Fire Belly at a cooking station, not a chemistry station like the others. Fire Belly is an injectable, like some of the other sludge recipes we've unlocked. It takes away 30 HP every time we use it, but while under the effects of Fire Belly, our damage output gradually increases at low health. We see a recurring theme with many of the consumables from Far Harbor. Most of them are dependent upon our radiation exposure, and they're very situational, but I'm sure there are any number of character builds that can make good use of them. Now I should note here that if we convince Uncle Ken to come to Far Harbor by any means, including intimidation, or by persuading him, this can potentially have a negative impact during the main quest much later on. It's easier to get a better outcome if we leave Uncle Ken back at his home. At any rate, completing this quest completes every side quest here in Far Harbor. And once done, we learn that Captain Avery wishes to have a word with us. Avery. It's hard to believe before you came here, all hope seemed lost. But now we've... We've taken back homesteads. People are finally coming together. And all of it, it's all because of you. What can I say? You guys pay well. Then that's caps well spent. You give me too much credit. Hardly. With all you've done, including the captain's dance, I guarantee you, generations from now, we'll still talk about you. I just wanted to help my friends. We don't deserve you. Sincerely. Well, you're welcome. My people are so mired with their own concerns, I don't think they even realize that you saved us. All of us. Anything I give you or do for you, it, it just isn't enough. But take this, and thank you. With that, we complete the quest, The Changing Tide, and Avery gives us the Rescue Diver Suit. Wearer gains ability to breathe underwater and protection from radiation. It grants plus 10 to ballistic and energy resistance and gives us a whopping 250 radiation resistance. But sadly, it can't be imbued with ballistic weave. Still, it's one of the best looking outfits we find in Far Harbor. It's an old diving suit resembling standard diving dress that was used by underwater workers in the 19th and early 20th century. It's covered in a green patina and it has a small window that does reveal our character's face, partially. You can see my character's goggles. Oh, actually it looks kind of creepy. Now we need to head back into the last plank and talk with this old Longfellow, in hopes that he can take us to Acadia so that we can finally find the missing Nakano girl. We'll pick up right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish many videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Things live in the fog. Celebrate the survivors of the fog with this brand new design that comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. Patrons and members are becoming ever more important as the future of YouTube monetization becomes questionable. So many thanks to all my members and patron supporters from the bottom of my heart. 
You make all of these videos possible. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.